Hi, what's your name? Oh, Jennifer, nice to meet you. I'm Ben, and you are Mark. Ah, Mark, it's a pleasure to meet you. Are you both familiar with playing cards? Oh, great. Um, do me a favor. Uh, go ahead and uh, you might as well shuffle those. <laughs> Get it out of your system now. So he shuffles the cards thoroughly. Do, 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 do. And I take them back, and I spread them on the table, and I say... Uh, have you ever had one of those experiences with, uh, you know, someone someone you're close to? It could be a family member, uh, brother, sister, uh, best friend, significant other. Uh, someone you spend a lot of time with, and uh, you always seem to know what the other one is thinking, right? Uh, it's not mental telepathy, but uh, it's just m more of a connection that you share. Now, it's interesting that, uh, you know, this is an experience that pretty much everybody has, and what I find interesting is that, at least in the English language, we don't have a word for it. I found out recently that in Japanese culture, they actually hold this experience with a great deal more reverence than we do here, and they actually do have a word for it. They call it Ishin Denshin. And Ishin Denshin uh, literally translates to what the mind thinks, the heart transmits. Kind of a beautiful concept. So we're going to try to create a sense of Ishin Denshin between us. Jennifer, can I do this with you? Okay. Uh, you might be wondering what the hell this has to do with playing cards, and uh, hopefully in a moment that will become uh, pretty clear. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to just set the cards right down on the table right here, and the moment I'm going to turn my back, I want you to take a chunk of cards from the deck, but not from the top. That would be too easy. What I actually want you to do is to take out a chunk of cards from the middle. It doesn't have to be too many, but it should be enough so that you don't immediately know how many cards you have, all right? Now, I'll be facing away, and what I want you to do is just silently count the cards so that you know exactly how many cards you've got there, all right? Count them accurately, and remember that number. We're going to call that your secret number. Fair enough? Okay, and once you have that number committed to memory, I just want you to mix the cards. You can shuffle them any way you want, uh, but hang on to them. Don't put them back on the deck because I'm going to give you some additional instructions before I turn back around. Does that make sense? All right, and uh, Mark, you can uh, you know keep me honest. Just make sure that I'm not facing away the entire time, all right? Okay, Jennifer, go ahead. So I place the cards in front of Jennifer, and I turn my back. And she takes out a chunk of cards from the middle, and she counts them. Of course, I, the performer, wouldn't know this number, but uh, since I'm playing the part of Jennifer right now, she's going to count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So she's now remembering the number 14. Mark doesn't know, and I don't know, but she's remembering the number 14. And I can say, don't forget, give the cards a shuffle, which she does. And uh, then I can say, let's add one more thing to this. Spread the cards with their faces toward you. Now, you see a whole bunch of cards there, yes. Um, so what I would like you to do is just simply think of one. It can be any card you want, any card at all. Now, uh, uh, one of the problems that I have when I do this is people tend to forget their cards. So uh, we're going to take a few steps to prevent that. Uh, start by cutting that card to the face of the packet and square them up so that that's the only card that you can see. I want you to just take a moment and relax. Try to block out everything out of your peripheral vision and uh, imagine that you're seeing that card through my eyes. Now, not, every, not everybody can do this, but uh, you might feel it happen. Just let me know when, when you feel as if you're seeing it through my eyes. And she says, okay, I can see it through your, your eyes. And I say, fine. Uh, you can put those back on the deck. We're done with them. In fact, square them up really, really well. And uh, maybe while you're at it, could you also just give the entire deck one complete cut? So she gives the deck one complete cut. All of this is happening with my back turn. So uh, I can say, is it safe for me to turn back around? I won't see anything? And she will say yes. And I can say, all right, so uh, you're now thinking of uh, one card in this deck that I couldn't possibly know. Um, and uh, obviously this has something to do with me trying to determine what card you were thinking of. Um, as I say, this is not mental telepathy, but uh, nevertheless, I'm going to give this a try. Uh, first, let's just mix these up just a little bit more so that even you don't know where your card is. And here's how it works. I'm just going to make three little piles of cards like this. And I want you to take a moment and look through all three just so that you know which of the three piles it's in. Uh, try not to give anything away visually, um, but just simply notice which, which packet contains your card. So she takes a moment and she looks through all three. And at a certain point, I then say, for some reason, I wasn't getting anything out of these two piles. Am I correct? Your, your card is not in these two? And she will answer yes. And I can stack them up and I can say, uh, I can stack them up. <laughs> Excuse me, slippery surface here. I can stack them up and I can say, fine. So all I know at this point is that your card has to be one of these. Uh, but uh, let's just uh, mix these up a little bit before I look. And just uh, uh, remember that moment when you, were, when you were seeing the card through my eyes. I'm going to ask you to do that again if you don't mind, and I think maybe uh, could be, you know, you know I'm, I'm changing my mind, I'm changing my mind. Is it okay if I change my mind? All right, so I don't think it was that one. Uh, let's see, yeah, keep concentrating on your card. Yeah, it was definitely not that one, or these. 
don't think it was any of these. Um, just near, trying to narrow this down a little bit. Uh, it's neither of those. It's not that one. Uh, it's not any of these or these uh, or these. I'm down to these two here. Can't quite make up my mind. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go with this one. Uh, I think this might be your card, but I need a witness. Uh, Jeffrey, would you please look at this and uh, just don't say it out loud, but please remember this card if you don't mind, just for a moment. Can you do that for me? All right, I want you to be a witness in case this next part goes wrong, but I'm going to leave the card right here. All right, so uh, I've committed to a card, and uh, you know I might be right, uh, I might be close, or I might, I might just be totally wrong. I guess we'll see. Uh, but you remember a moment ago you were also thinking of a number, right? All right, so uh, just try to transmit that number to me as well. All right, you're doing great, and all right, so I am picking up on a number. I have no idea if I'm right or wrong, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to place the card that I think you're thinking of at the number I think you're thinking of, all right? And uh, this should be uh, an interesting way of determining uh, whether I've been successful on both counts, okay? So let me just start, uh, get these all back together, and uh, remember, you were thinking of a number, and uh, Jeffrey, don't forget the card. I'm going to take this under the table for just a moment. Yeah, that ought to do it. I'm going to place these cards right here. I will not touch them again. So uh, you were thinking of a number. What number was it that you were thinking of? And she will say, I was thinking of the number 14. And I can say, really? Well, that's interesting. Uh, would you believe me if I told you that I that, that was the number that I was receiving? And she's going to seem skeptical. And I can say, fine, please deal exactly 14 cards face up on the table right here. So she begins to deal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And I stop her right there. I say, this is the 14th card. I have not touched the deck. Uh, please deal the 14th card face down. And she does. And I can say, all right, this is sort of the moment of truth. Um, uh, Jeffrey, uh, just say this. What was the color? What was just the color of the card that I showed you? And he will say red. And I can say, Jennifer, by any chance, were you thinking of a red card? And she will say yes. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Jeffrey, what was the suit of the card that I showed you? And he will say it was a heart. And Jennifer, by any chance, were you thinking of a heart? And she will say yes. Now things are getting interesting. Then I can say, all right, I'm going to count to three. And on the count of three, I, won't, I want you both to uh, name the card that you're thinking of at the same time. So I say one, two, three, bam. And they both say ten of hearts. And they're reacting. And I can then say, turn it over. And she turns over the 14th card. And it is the exact card that she was thinking of at the exact number she was thinking of. Uh, so that is uh, basically what the current performance of Ishin Denshin is supposed to look like. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.